In this video, we're going to talk about how to use Retrofit to easily parse JSON and XML to POJO, where POJO was a plain old Java object. In other words, a noun class, a Java bean, something like that. First, why Retrofit? Well, parsing JSON is very popular. It's a lightweight data interchange format that is often used to aggregate data together. Many cities like Cincinnati have uh, open data initiatives where they make data available via JSON. So you can go in and you can say, okay, well, I want to see what this looks like, yeah, city vendor payments. And then you can grab this in a JSON format, just like so. Pop that URL into a browser and we see some kind of format of data that is somewhat readable by humans, but more importantly is readable by a computer. The JSON stream that we're going to parse here is one that I've made from plant places. So uh, this is a, a list of plants, a very straightforward one. That's a good example we'll use. So we can parse this into a series of objects that we can read and we can do it without any manual threading network connection or parsing like cutting up a string makes our life much easier. We're going to need to add a couple of dependencies to our build.gradle file. So let's go ahead and do that. So double shift to find build.gradle and the one that I'm editing is in uh, is right here in the app folder. And so what I'm going to do is just at the bottom, I'm going to paste the two items from the presentation, and then I'm going to choose Sync Now to tell Gradle to sync. You'll notice that this comes from Square, which is a software company that just happened to use this as an internal project and then opened it up uh, to the world to use, which was awfully nice of them. We'll let that sync run in the background. One other thing that we need is internet permission. For that, we simply navigate to the Android Manifest. Of course, double shift and type in Android Manifest if you need to find it. I've already pulled it up to speed up the video a little bit, so we'll say it uh, uses permission. Notice where I am at the very top within the manifest tag, but before the application tag. So I say uh, uses permission, Android permission, internet. Uh, finalize the tag like that, and we're good. Now the next thing we need to do is a little bit tricky, and that is we need to be able to create a series of Java classes that model this JSON stream that we're going to be consuming. So easiest way to do, we, we can try to interpret it. I mean, a, a curly means an object, a square bracket means a list, but an easier way to do so is simply to copy this and put this in a JSON viewer. The one that I like is jsonviewer.stack.hu, but there are plenty others. Now, if you take a look, you'll see that we have a class here and then the class contains a list. So we need to create a class that's going to contain this list and then the list is a list of plants. And if you take a look at this list of plants, you'll see as I expand these numbers, every one of these plants has an ID with a value, a genus with a value, species with a value, cultivar, common, so on and so forth. So you can see how we can form this into a class. So the attributes and the values belong to uh, an object of this class, and then again, another object of the same class. This is the class we're going to call plant. All of these plant objects belong to a list we're going to call plants. That plants list belongs to yet another class. Uh, we'll need to make a class for that. That's the tricky part is you have to know where to start. You have to know that if you start with curlies up here, it's going to be a class that you're going to parse into. If you start with square brackets, it's going to be a list. So let's take a look at our development environment and see what we need to do. Uh, but in one moment, uh, I do want to point out a serialized name attribute that we're going to see when we take a look at our development environment. So we'll start with our existing plant DTO and I'll explain that serialized name as I get here. So the plant DTO, if you take a look, we have a GUID, global unique identifier, a cache ID, a genus, species, cultivar, and common name. No surprise that matches very closely to our JSON stream. Now the only trick is Genus, species, cultivar common, no problem. But note there's nothing that maps directly to ID. That should be GUID, but it's not a perfect match. So what we do here is I put that serialized name, and that just says, how do I want to map this in the JSON? So you see that I'm using ID to say, okay, when you see the ID, map that to GUID. The others are going to follow quite straightforward, so I'll do this in fast forward mode. Now you see I've put the serialized name indicator above each of the attributes that I wish to parse from XML. Now cache ID, that's kind of a concept of a local unique identifier, something we're not going to get from an API's JSON stream. So that looks good. And what we have to remember is we've just created the mapping for these classes here. We can put them into a list, but we need yet one more class 
that's going to own that list. So let's make that class now. I'll go ahead and put that in my DTO package, uh, just new Java class, and we'll call this one plant list. And this one's going to be fairly straightforward. So plant list, yep, add it to get so I can share it with you. And then I'm going to say private list plant DTO. Remember what plant DTO is? That's that class we were just editing. So a list of plant DTO objects, and we'll just call it plants. And then I need one of one more of those serialized name, and we're simply going to call that plants, just like so. Because if we take a look back at the JSON, we know that the array list or the array here is called plants. So we want to make those two similar. So now we've done the mapping, what's next? We've mapped and we've used the serialized name attribute. And so the next thing we need is a retrofit client instance. This is kind of like a factory method that makes retrofit available to us. It also tells us what the base URL of our website is. And by website, I mean purely the domain name of the site that's providing our JSON to us. So just the HTTP through the .com. You don't want to do anything after the .com or whatever, .org, .mx, .us, .uk, whatever it is. Uh, you don't want to do anything after that, uh, after that ending .com and the slash. Let me show you what I mean. Probably easiest if I just create it. So in my DAO, I right click and I say new Java class, and we're going to call this retrofit client instance. Does not need to extend anything, so we'll just leave it like so. Of course, add it to get. And now I'm going to uh, de declare a couple of attributes here, private, and then static, retrofit. There we go. Choose the second one, and then retrofit, like so. Private, static, and then we'll say final string, and then base URL equals, and then for mine I'm going to say HTTP colon slash slash, uh, let's see, we'll do www.plantplaces.com, and then a forward slash. So that's all we need for the base URL. We need the protocol, the HTTP, all the way to the domain name, and then terminate with a slash. Make sure that you have it in that same syntax because that's exactly what Retrofit is looking for. After that, we're going to say we're going to make a static a method, public static Retrofit, and then a get Retrofit instance. So think of this like a factory method, something that's creating an object for us. We've seen that before. So we'll say if Retrofit equal equal null. Okay. Not only is this a factory instance, but it's it's more specifically the singleton design pattern because you see we have one variable called retrofit, and in this get retrofit instance, we're going to say if retrofit equals null, create a retrofit instance. But only if it's null, only if it has not been created yet. Only if it has not been created yet. And then at the end, we're simply going to return the retrofit instance. So by the end, we should either return one that has already been created or return one that we are creating here in this if test here. So I told you that's a singleton pattern because there's only going to be one retrofit variable and only one retrofit object sitting around. A nice, efficient way to manage memory. We're also going to use another pattern that we've seen before, uh, which is the builder pattern. You might remember we saw that in the uh, Google API client and uh, GPS a plant back when we were dealing with the GPS. So for the Google API client, scroll up just a moment here, you see we have this builder pattern where we essentially add different options and then we build and we assemble it all together. So what do you want on your car? Do you want automatic transmission? Do you want air conditioning? We add all those options and then we invoke a build. And that's exactly what we're doing here. So I'm going to say retrofit equals new retrofit to dot retrofit dot builder. So the builder class is essentially something that encapsulates all of this building logic. Dot base URL. Okay, and then guess what? Base URL that we added before. Dot add converter factory. Uh, and then we'll say, whoops, we'll say JSON converter factory dot create. So JSON, uh, that's a library provided to us from Google. Uh, to make it easy to parse JSON, and then dot .build. So what we're doing here is we're saying, I want to uh, parse JSON using the JSON converter factory. I'm going to wrap this all up in a retrofit object, 
In other words, these are the options that I'm adding to my retrofit instance, the base URL and also the converter factory. Again, don't worry about the full path to the JSON because if we take a look at our JSON feed, we'll see that sure enough, the base URL is www.plantplaces.com, but there are a couple of directories and a bit of information that follows that. So I'm gonna copy that. We'll come back to that later. We don't need it just yet. Looks like I have a little typo here. That should not be a constructor call, so I'm going to take that off. Also, because we're, we're essentially chaining methods together here, uh, so, and I misspelled something here too, there we go. We're essentially chaining methods together here, so avoid the temptation to terminate these lines with a semicolon. That will not work. Note that we're essentially just calling one method after another after another. You could put this all in one line if you want, but uh, just don't add a semicolon until the end. It's really hard to do that sometimes. I do it out of habit. Uh, just be careful. So we're all, all done with that, but I still want to answer the part about what do we do with the part of the URL that follows the base URL. In other words, what do we do with this slash Perl slash mobile uh, view plant JSON PL, all that stuff? Well, for that, we need to put it into an interface. And this is very interesting because all we're going to do is create an interface not a class that implements the interface. I'm going to choose new, and in Android Studio, we do start it as a Java class, but under kind, we say interface, and I'm going to call this, I get, or I'll just call it get plant service, something like that. Very simple, just like so. Go ahead and add to get. Uh, now let's make a method, and the method is kind of interesting. We start with the return type call. Call is something that's provided to us from Retrofit, you see right down here, and call accepts a generic type, as you see by that less than greater than T. Our generic type here is what? Our generic type is that very top level object, this guy that we made that holds a collection of plants. Remember who that is, remember our plant list. This is the class that holds a collection of plants represents this very top level object. So I go back to get plant service and I'm going to say call plant list, just like so. And then I'm going to say get all plants, uh, open and close paren and terminate with a semicolon. So now I need to add a simple uh, annotation on the top. So at get, and what do we put in here? Uh, first of all, yeah, that's fine. Retrofit library, double quote, double quote, inside of the double quotes, control V, that's the part that follows the base URL that we configured earlier in retrofit client instance. Now something a little bit funny, you see that base URL ends in a slash and our get begins with a slash. It's going to append those together. It feels like there are going to be two slashes, but don't worry, it will work it out. So you should terminate the base URL with a slash and you should start this relative URL also with a slash and we're all good. So we now have our service interface the next thing we need to do is bind everything together in an onCreate method. We'll, we will do that in just a moment, and we will also take a look at asynchronous messaging, which is kind of similar to a self-addressed stamped envelope model that I mentioned in some previous videos when I was talking about permissions. Let's do all this now. So I go to GPS a plant, and I'll tell you what, we'll just put it down here towards the bottom. I put it in a presentation mode so we can see this in high def because the rest of the logic I'm going to do is going to be right here. So first of all, retrofit client instance, autocomplete by the way is your friend, dot get retrofit instance, instance. Remember that? That's the class with the static method that we made earlier. Dot create, okay, and then I'm going to say get plant service. Now remember that? That's the interface that we just created. So all of these things that we've created are, are coming together. Sorry, should be get plant service dot class. There we go. And then terminate with the semicolon. So the little kind of a singleton method in the builder pattern and also the interface with a method signature and only a method signature. Control Alt V in Android Studio will assign this to a local variable. We'll simply call this service just like so. That's good. Okay, now we're going to say service. Remember that method that we just created? Get all plants. So we call service.getAllPlants, control alt v one more time, and we are going to save this in a variable called simply call. Because what we're doing is we're doing an asynchronous method call here. In other words, we're asking retrofit to invoke this method. Retrofit's going to do that in a separate process or a separate thread, and then it's going to call us back once it gets results. So 
Uh, that's, a, that's handy because that means we don't have to worry about threading. Retrofit handles that for us. We're not allowed to make a network call on the user interface thread, so Retrofit's going to handle all those dirty details for us. Now, the next thing we're going to do is say call dot in queue. That means basically queue up this response. And inside of this, I'm going to say new. Oh, look at that. It's auto-completing for me. I love when it does that. New callback plant list. And then it generates all of this stuff for me. Notice how important that generic identifier is because that generic identifier is used throughout this callback and these methods within this callback. Let me take a step back. Remember I said that a callback is like a self-addressed stamped envelope, an analogy I've given before. This goes back to the old days where, you'd, uh, where you would write your address on an envelope, put a stamp on it, fold it up, put that envelope in a bigger envelope, mail the bigger, bigger envelope to the prices right in Hollywood, California. They'd receive the big envelope, open it, see the little envelope, put two tickets to the prices right in it, and then drop that envelope in the mail and it would come back to you with two tickets to the prices right. Very similar thing with the callback. Here what we're doing is we're emailing the prices right in Hollywood, California. Here we're hearing back from the prices right. On response means here are your two tickets. On failure means we were unable to issue the tickets. Maybe we don't know who you are or maybe the show was already sold out. So those are the two methods that we can handle. Let's start with on response. This is quite straightforward. We start with the response object that was passed in right here and we say response.body and then do our magic control alt v that's our best friend and we're going to say plant list body. Remember what plant list is? Remember this guy? We saw this one earlier that that uh, very simple high level class that's con that is owning our list of plants. As a matter of fact, I'm glad I stepped in here. I want to go ahead and generate a getter and setter, which I do just like so. Back to where we were with GPS a plant and plant list body dot response dot get body. Now I'm going to say body dot get plants. Control Alt V one more time and body get plants. We're going to get our list of plants and now I'm going to say plants dot size. Just something I can debug through. We just want to make sure we're getting the data. We can do something with the data later. On failure, we definitely want to see what's in this throwable T if we get there. So I'll say int i equals one plus one. Just a line where I can snap a breakpoint. And with this, we're in good shape. So I will go ahead and put this in the debugger. With the debugger now engaged, I go ahead and get the retrofit instance. We make our call and then we do the NQ. Now watch carefully as I choose F8. f 8s going to go to the next line. I'm currently on line 132. It goes to the end of the method because remember this is an asynchronous call. So these other methods that we get, the on response and on failure, are going to occur when we hear back from the process that's running in the background. So I choose F9 and we see good news. It picked up in the on response. So I choose F8 to step over I choose F8 one more time to step over, and at this point I see plants has a size of 63, so I'm a little bit excited because that looks like uh, just about the number of plants we should have. I searched on oak, so these are all going to be oak trees, and sure enough you see, or something that has the word oak. So you see we have desert oak, red silly oak, blush tulip oak. Those are not true oaks. The only true oaks are the ones in the genus Quercus, but nonetheless you see there are several plants that have that word oak. And these are the ones that we got back. If I expand the zero, you'll see desert oak. Uh, if I expand the number one, you'll see tree war, <laughs> waratath. I think, I think I'm, I'm probably mispronouncing that. Uh, red silly oak, let's just call it that. And then the blush tulip oak. Let's compare that to our JSON and what do we have? Desert oak, red silly oak, and what's the, what's the last one? Blush tulip oak. So sure enough, we're able to take a stream like this and parse it into Java objects. The next thing that we want to do is show it somewhere, but we'll save that for a future video. In this video, we've taken a look at Retrofit and how we can use it to easily parse JSON and XML to Apojo. So I hope it's been helpful. Let me know what you think in the comments. Thank you.